Okay, so this handout that says Great Migration Summary. Great Migration Summary. Um, I'm going to show you in a second. This is one of the many handouts, uh, many links in that Great Migration Project folder. Um, I want to point out some of the um, usefulness of these things for what you're doing in terms of finishing up this project. Um, I'll do that visually in a second, but I'm going to do it quickly with this handout. Um, this is basically a, can be helpful in a few different ways, I think, as you think about your arguments, as you think about what themes you're going to talk about in your paper and not talk about in your paper. Right. This is background information. There's statistical information here. It also may help you talk about which two or three themes you choose to write about right, that come up in terms of why people are migrating, what they encounter when they find. And so I want to go through it quickly because it's short, but it's actually very helpful in several different ways. Right. There may be something about your main character that comes up here. Now remember, what you're doing is answering really a big question, right? Do you think the migration is beneficial or not? Is it good or bad, ultimately, for those that are going to immigrate? Right? You're choosing a specific main character that helps you discuss that, that helps you explain that, that helps you explore that question. Right? So maybe your answer to that question might come from the experiences of your main character. It might come from which two or three themes you choose to talk about and how you use those to evaluate the migration overall. Right, so keep that in mind as you as you um, are approaching this project. Right? You are making the argument using all the various sources available to you. Not everything is going to make it into your paper. So part of your decision is what am I writing about, what am I not writing about. So how can a handout like this be helpful? Right, first of all, there's some statistical things here which you already should be familiar with by now. Right? It says overview. Between 1910 and 1970, an estimated 6 million people migrated. Right? So it's giving you some statistics, some numbers uh, about the overall scope of the migration. Right? There's an important point there that folks are coming not just to the north, but also to the Midwest. Later on to the West Coast, too. So if your main character is going from Texas to Los Angeles, which is going to be actually a major stream of the second phase of the migration, it might look different, their experiences might look different than someone coming in the earliest phases. The next thing that's going to give you in the next paragraph are some of the reasons why people are leaving. Right? Keep in mind that people aren't just waking up saying, I'm going to walk north. Right? There are reasons, there are things pushing them out of the south. Right? There are push factors pushing people out of the south. Um, so be thinking about what the push factors are. Right? One of them is going to be Jim Crow. Jim Crow segregation, racism, we've talked about how folks are getting tired of dealing with Jim Crow. Right? So they think that the North might be a homeland, a better place, right? a place where they don't have to deal with these racial issues. Now it's up to you to decide if that's going to be true or not. Right? Is that true if someone migrates from Mississippi to get away from Jim Crow laws, but they end up in Chicago in 1919 in the middle of a race riot? They haven't really gotten so much away from it, you could say. Right? Maybe that leads you to say that the migration isn't good for your character. Right? So they talk about Jim Crow laws here. First wave of the Great Migration, African Americans settled in urban areas such as New York, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Detroit. Right there, they're telling you several of the more important destination cities where people end up landing. Right? New York, Chicago, Detroit, the auto industry is going to be huge. Right? So in terms of thinking about what particular stream you already might have some hints there as to which ones you might want to be looking at. Get you into World War II later on, but we don't have to necessarily talk about that yet since chronologically we're not to World War II yet. But you should know that more people are, are going to migrate during World War II than even left during World War I. But they're coming for the same reasons. Right, there's, world, there's jobs before the World War II just like there was during World War I. There's still racial difficulties. So in some ways the themes are going to be the same. Harlem Renaissance leader Elaine Locke argued in his essay, The New Negro, that the wash and rush of this human tide on the beach line of the northern city is to be explained primarily in terms of a new vision of opportunity. So that's kind of what we're, tra what we're tracing. People are going north because they think it's going to offer them certain opportunities. Now, it's up to you and, and we their, their story, their experiences to decide, was this a good move, basically? Right, and you can answer that question in a number of ways. I like this part because it connects this migration to what comes after. Right? We're already started talking about what are the implications, what are the outcomes 
of this migration. Why is it significant? So what? One of the immediate implications is the great is uh, the Harlem Renaissance. Uh, could you have had a Harlem Renaissance, a new Negro movement more generally because this explosion of kind of culture would happen in various cities, not just in Harlem. You know, D.C. is a major center of the Renaissance. But could that have happened if people that hadn't migrated here by the thousands earlier? No. There would have been no kind of cultural center, no artistic um, group of folks in Harlem, in D.C., in these other cities, had they not first left the South and come north. So again, even in the first three paragraphs of this thing, you've gotten some interesting and important information, background, uh, that can be um, useful for you as you complete this project. And also, as we move into discussing the Harlem Renaissance and what comes after this. Those of you who just came in, there are two quick handouts on the table there that, that would be helpful. Um, so they tell you a little more about disfranchisement and Jim Crow laws. Thank you, thank you. 15th Amendment, right? They, they're telling you about, again about some of the push factors pushing people out of the South. Remember, we can think of migration and immigration in terms of both push and pull factors. Usually, when people leave their home, they're being pushed out by certain factors that are being pulled by other factors. Right, this is going to be the case with African American migrants as well. So, the Jim Crow laws, racial violence at the next section, right? Fleeing lynching, you know, fleeing violence in the South. Now, as we talked about, they're going to run right into many examples of racial violence in the North. Right? The summer of 1919 is called the Bloody Summer. And that's m many northern cities that are going to erupt as southern cities erupt as well. So a lot of these migrants are like, wait a second, I fled lynching in Mississippi only to run into a race riot in Chicago. I shouldn't have come. So you may come across letters from people saying, you know what, don't come. It's just as bad here as it was in the city. You just make a little more money. So people are evaluating the reasons why they came. And that's essentially what you're doing. You're seeing how do they evaluate it, those things. The boll weevil. You may not know what a boll weevil is. Um, a boll weevil is a little insect. A little insect that damaged the southern cotton crops really, really heavily in this period. I think so what? Why are they telling us about some insects? The science class? No. Well, that's going to be significant. That would be a good identification term, for example, because this boll weevil comes through, wipes out large parts of the cotton crop. Most folks in the south are working as sharecroppers on cotton plantations. So when the boll weevil comes through and wipes out the crop, you don't have a job. So that functions as a push factor, an economic factor. Right? It's going to push many people out of the South that perhaps wouldn't have left otherwise. Right? They decided, hey, I mean, there's nothing holding me here now. I can't make a living here. Let me go ahead and try my luck going north. I right? read all these stories about how positive the North is and how much better things are going to be there, all these good paying jobs and whatnot. Right? So maybe they're going to believe the hype and and go. Again, is that going to be a good thing? Is that going to be a bad thing? It's up to you to figure that out. But this is information that's going to be useful for you, especially if your main characters end up talking about some of this stuff. Right? They're sharecroppers and they're talking about not being able to make a living. It might have a lot to do with this. World War I. World War I is a pull factor. I just said you had people being pushed out of their home. You also have them being pulled by various things to the north. The north seems like a good place. Otherwise, why come? Otherwise, why pack up all your stuff, or whatever you could carry or afford to bring, and go to some new place you maybe had never been before? Well, the idea is that it's going to be a good place. It's going to be a good move. It's going to be a, uh, a wise investment. Right? World War I, all these good paying factory jobs, right? economics. So in that very first handout I gave you of the kind of outline of the paper, um, I gave you a list of maybe eight, nine, ten different themes as to why people are migrating and as to why, what they might encounter when they get to the north. One of the first factors I put up there was economics. Like how many of these letters that you've looked at or we've looked at or you've seen talk about getting a better job? Heard there's work in the north, could you give me a job? Right, economics is a huge factor in this entire process. Right, a lot of folks are going to be leaving for these, this war work, as it was called. This is both black men and black women. 
Now, for the most part, these factory jobs are considered men's work, right? So a lot of men are saying, look, if I can just get this job, I can get out of the cotton crop. But most black women are going to be working as domestics, uh, working in someone else's house, taking care of their children, doing their laundry, uh, housekeeping, these sorts of things. But even domestic work, although it has its problems, pays much better than sharecropping. So both black men and black women are going to see this as a step up. I'm making five dollars a day now, and I used to make a dollar a week. That's a big difference. So the fact that World War I is this specific economic pull. Um, and think about the themes, right? The theme of economics. The theme of gender, right? One of the themes in the, uh, the first outline was about um, how might the factor of gender come up. Right? How many of those letters written by men talk about you know, manhood? I don't feel like a man. I can't feed my family. I need this and that, blah, blah, blah. How much does gender come up in the women's writings? A lot of these women are saying, look, i got to get out of here for various reasons. Or not saying it explicitly. They're really talking about things that affect women particularly. Um, the last reading I asked you to do, the Darling Clark Hine Culture of the Semblance reading, is perfect for that point. On the very first page, she's talking about this culture of dissemblance that black women develop. She's saying that they develop because of fear of sexual assault. Right? The very first page talks about how many women leave the South, not just for jobs, but because of fear of rape. Right? So gender plays a role in this, why people decide to get up and leave. Men may leave because they're afraid to get lynched, and women might leave because they're afraid of rape. And there's this at least rumors of better jobs, better housing, and things up north. So a lot of things may come into this story. This is just you know, a page and a half worth of information, but you can see how many aspects of the argument can help you make. Um, the black press, we talked a bit about the black press. Um, these black newspapers, particularly like the Chicago Defender is a huge one. Pittsburgh Courier is a huge one. There were several black papers here in D.C., the Washington Bee, the Washington Colored American, right, that are advertising about the migration, advertising about jobs. Um, they're going to also be important in terms of advertising the Harlem Renaissance, providing an outlet for all these artists that are writing poems and books and, and short stories and paintings and such. Right, so the, the black press is particularly significant as well. A lot of the letters that we read came from the Chicago Defender or some of these other papers um, that Detroit paper that was putting out uh, helpful advice for migrants. Uh, so this is kind of a good, it is just what it says it is, a, a kind of great migration summary. Uh, the summary of the two, uh, the, the major, um, some of the major themes coming out of this migration. Use the sources available to you. There are, in that great migration project folder, there are so, there's so much information. There's actually too much information. There's much more than you need for this project. Between your textbook and Appreciate it. So be thinking about all these things and how they help you make your argument, right? You have more than enough sources. My goal here was to put everything you need basically in one folder. Right? Everything you need in one folder, and, and it's definitely there. Um, you actually have to be selective in terms of deciding what you're going to write about, and just as importantly, what you're not going to write about in these five pages. Because five pages seems like a lot, but it fills up quickly. Right? By the time you pick your main character, pick an immigration stream to describe, pick what two or three themes come up, whether it's economics, people look for jobs, right, or education, or gender, or what have you. Um, actually analyze those things, right? provide examples, tell me something about what sources you chose, and include your conclusion. Your conclusion, although it's going to be brief, can even link to what comes out of this migration. If you start off with a, a person in the first class that's doing uh, their main character is one of the Harlem Renaissance figures, uh, Romeo Beard, uh, going to be a famous painter. But he comes, he migrates during this period. So that person's paper may start with their main character saying something about this figure becomes super important to the Harlem Renaissance, but they start out by migrating from you know, Georgia or whatever. And they also end with that, because part of the outcome of this migration is going to be that it makes possible 
things like the Harlem Renaissance. So by the time you do all that, you're out of space. You actually have to be fairly selective in terms of what you choose to talk about. You cannot talk about all of the themes on that first handout. There's no space to talk about eight, nine different things. Uh, you probably have to choose at most two or three key themes that your main character illuminates so that you know, this particular stream illuminates, whether it's you know, jobs or um, you know, fear of racial violence as to why they're coming. Just as importantly, though, what do they encounter when they get here? Uh, part of your answer, much of your answer to that question may come from what happens to these folks that come. And we're going to actually need some of the technology to look at one of the other uh, handouts here in a second. So I want to, um, we're probably going to steal that room across the way since uh, they have vacated it. Let me see if I have um, a copy of this. Yeah. 